has the following properties. We're going to concentrate on vertical asymptotes, on horizontal asymptotes, and on x-intercepts. Okay, so to create this, we're going to have to create a function that has vertical asymptotes. It looks like at x equals negative 5 and x equals 2. So as I try to define such a function, we're going to have to make sure that we have vertical asymptotes, which would be denominator issues at x minus x equals negative 5 and at x equals 2. So notice that if x equals 2, that's going to cause a 0 in the denominator, and if x equals negative 5, that causes a 0 in the denominator. So that's going to make sure that I satisfy the condition of the vertical asymptotes. So I'll underline those in blue so you can see that that's where I'm controlling my vertical asymptotes. Next, let's look at the x-intercepts. So x-intercepts are where the output is supposed to be equal to 0. So for x-intercepts at 6 and negative 4, I'm going to put an x minus 6 on the top and an x plus 4 on the top. Because when you replace x with 6 and x with negative 4, you're going to get zeros, but now they're in the numerator, so those are actually legal. So notice I'll underline those, and that looks like that's what's happening there. Now on the top and the bottom, both of these are quadratic, right? They're x squared level. So if we want to have a horizontal asymptote occurring at 7, that just means we need to throw in a number 7 here so that way we're making sure that we have the right horizontal asymptote. Essentially a limit as you go off towards infinity. So that's what's giving me the 7 out in front corresponding to the green for the horizontal asymptotes. So this would be my final answer for this particular function. I'd say y equals 7 times x minus 6 times x plus 4 over x plus 5 times x minus 2. So why don't you see if you can do one on your own here. Pause the video and see if you can find a function that has vertical asymptotes at x equals 3 and negative 2, one horizontal asymptote at y equals negative 5, and some x-intercepts at x equals 1 and x equals 7. So assuming you paused the video and tried this out on your own, we're going to get vertical asymptotes here, horizontal asymptote here, and x-intercepts here and here. So as I try to set this up, let's go y equals the vertical asymptotes are going to have to be quantities in the denominator. So we want a vertical asymptote at x equals 3, and we want a vertical asymptote at x equals negative 2. So that's going to give me my vertical asymptotes. Next, let's jump to the x-intercepts. We want those to be at 1 and 7. So I'll go x minus 1 x minus 7 to control my intercepts. And then finally, I want a horizontal asymptote that occurs at y equals negative 5. So let me put a negative 5 out here in front, and this function will do what we want.